your questions. Bible Answers Presented by Lori Dharma You asked, does God has a name to identify himself as the only true God? There are so many false religious gods, imposters representing the true God Jehovah. How do we identify the true God among these imposters? Just like, we all have a personal name to identify us from other individuals isn't it reasonable for God to, to have a name to identify his true Godship? There are many titles like presidents, prime ministers, doctors, engineers, plumbers and so on. Does the title represents the true identity of the person holding it? No. Same way God, Lord, Creator etc., our titles refers to many gods. That is why Jehovah the true God has his own personal name just like we all have a personal name, for his worshippers to know him by name to stand out among the many false gods. Do you have a personal identification cards or other credentials to prove your true identity? Yes you do, don't you? Why because you want to identify yourself as an individual different from the others in the community. You have identification cards such as passport, driver's license, birth certificates, citizen certificate and even certified documents to certify your identity. So isn't it reasonable for God also to have his credential to identify that he is the true God among the false gods worshipped by many mislead people? Bible identifies God's name, the same way we have an identification credential. In the Bible God identifies himself with his unique name. God says, I am Jehovah. That is my name. Isaiah 42 8, although he also has many titles, such as God Almighty, Sovereign Lord, and Creator, he honors his worshippers by inviting them to address him by his personal name. Genesis 17 1, Acts 4:24, 1 Peter 4:19. That name uniquely identifies our true God as a person who stands out among the false religious claim that they represent him. Just like we identify ourselves from the criminals who misleads the authorities. Did Jesus mislead the identity of our true God? Many Christian denominations mislead their followers by saying Jesus is the God Almighty and to worship him. Is this is true? In the Bible Jesus identifies himself as God's Son or the Son of God. John 10 36, 11, 4, Jesus never identified himself as Almighty God. Jesus too revealed God's name when he quoted an ancient passage of scripture and said, Hear, O Israel, Jehovah our God is one Jehovah. Mark 12 29, Deuteronomy 6 4. What more assurance they need to convince Jesus is Son of God and not the God Almighty. Do you believe in the Trinity? The central doctrine of the Christian religions? If you did, is this teaching found in the Bible? Majority of mainstream Christian religions, names the true God as a triune God? They view the Trinity as the central doctrine of the Christian religion. According to this teaching, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are three persons in one God. Jesus, the Son of God, never claimed to be equal to or of the same substance as his Father. Rather, he said, I am going my way to the Father, because the Father is greater than I am. John 14 28, he also told one of his followers, I am ascending to my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. John 20 17, the Holy Spirit is not a person. Early Christians became filled with Holy Spirit, and Jehovah said, I shall pour out some of my Spirit upon every sort of flesh. Acts 2 1 4, 17, the Holy Spirit is not part of a trinity. It is God's active force. 
Sadly this fallacy is widely taught in all Christian denominations and strongly believed by in essence followers. Did Jesus encouraged his followers to use his father's name? Jesus Christ while on earth encouraged his followers to use God's name. Matthew 6 9, John 17 26. Many translations of the Bible contain God's personal name and for example at Psalm 83 18, in the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures, says, You, whose name is Jehovah, you alone are the Most High over all the earth. Does God has any other names to identify himself? No. God has just one personal name. It is written in Hebrew language and is usually rendered Jehovah in English. The name consists of four Hebrew consonants, corresponding to YHWH or JHVH, and has historically been rendered Jehovah in English. It appears about 7,000 times in ancient Bible manuscripts far more frequently than any other term for God or, indeed, anyone else's personal name. Why did religious leaders remove God's name from the Bible? Some Jews adopted the superstitious belief that it was wrong to utter God's personal name. When they read aloud a scripture that contained God's name, they substituted expressions such as Lord or God. As centuries passed, this superstition spread and the ancient pronunciation was eventually lost. Satan who is the opposer of the true God and his followers were determined to erase God's name from God's word the Bible and from the mind of innocent people and that is how people became the victims of Satan's false teaching and lost the name of the true God Jehovah. Is it something new to you to know God's name? You are not alone? It is not surprise as it may well be, because many translators of the Bible use God's name sparingly, if at all. Professed Christians without knowing the name of true God and his purpose they are lulled into believing that they are worshipping the true God, when they are not. They often replace it with the title Lord and continue to worship false gods influenced by Satan the devil the original liar. The devil uses deception to increase his influence. Religions that teach false doctrines mislead people into disobeying God. Learn to recognize the devil's methods so that you are not ignorant of his designs. 2 Corinthians 2, 11 Whose name did Jesus encourage his followers to sanctify and glorify? Jesus in his Lord's Prayer taught his followers to petition God with the words, Let your name be sanctified. Matthew 6 9. Jesus himself prayed to God, Father, glorify your name. John 12 28. Jesus made glorifying God's name a priority in his life, and for this reason he prayed to his father Jehovah I have made your name known to them and will make it known. John 17 26. For Jesus and his followers God's name was paramount to glorify and sanctify his name Jehovah the true God. How did God's people view God's name? God's people in the past understood that their protection and salvation were linked to God's unique name. The name of Jehovah is a strong tower. Into it the righteous one runs and receives protection. Proverbs 18:10. Everyone who calls on the name of Jehovah will be saved. Joel 2:32. The Bible shows that God's name would distinguish those who serve him. For all the peoples will walk, each in the name of its God, but we will walk in the name of Jehovah our God forever and ever. Micah 4 5, Acts 15 14 What does God's name reveal? The meaning of God's name implies his ongoing attachment to his creation, which includes us. Moreover, the fact that God has made his name known indicates that he wants us to know him intimately. Yes, 
he took the initiative to tell us his name shows clearly, God wants us to view him, not as some vague and distant, deity, but as a, real person, to whom we can draw closer to him. Psalm 73 28 Does God really wants us to use his name? Yes he does. Just like you may want your friend to call you by your given name. How would you feel if that person persistently refused to use your name and continued to call you by title? As time goes by you might wonder whether this person really want to be your friend and respects your name. Same goes with God. Jehovah has told mankind his name, and he encourages us to use it. When we do, we show respect to Jehovah's wish that we want to get closer to him and recognizing him as the true God among the false religions. Bible says, he even notices those meditating on his name says in Malachi 3:16. Whom did God's prophets worship? The prophets Abraham and Moses worshipped Jehovah God, just as Jesus did. Genesis 24 27, Exodus 15 1, 2, John 20 17, Jehovah is the true God of the Bible, the creator of all things. Revelation 4, 11, He is the God, not just of one people, but of all the earth. Psalm 47, 2. Did God condemn false prophets for making people to forget his name? God himself inspired Bible writers to use his name thousands of times, and he directs those who worship him to use his name. Isaiah 42 8, Joel 2, 32, Malachi 3, 16, Romans 10 13. In fact, God condemned false prophets who tried to make people forget his name. These prophets for their own benefit encouraged Baal false gods worship and eventually they were exposed and were killed, Jeremiah 23 27. This is exactly what is happening today. False religions have made people to forget God's name. Soon they will know their fate when God's kingdom rules the earth. Why did Jews remove God's name from the Bible? Some Jews adopted superstitious belief that it was wrong to utter God's personal name. When they read aloud a scripture that contained God's name, they substituted expressions such as Lord or God. As centuries passed, this superstition spread and the ancient pronunciation of God's sacred name was eventually lost. Today we see professed Christian religions have removed the name from the Bible and have kept their followers ignorant of true God's name. So majority are worshipping all kind of false gods who does not exist but are dungy idols. Did, false religious traditions, influence removing God's unique name? Yes, following the tradition of the Jews, God's name was removed from the Bible. Some Jewish scribes refused to pronounce the divine name. But they did not remove it totally from their copies of the Bible. God did not want us to follow human traditions that deviate from his commandments. Matthew 15, 1 3. Did God tolerate idols worship? The scriptures do not sanction the use of images or idols as a means to worship the true God. Such a practice is against the principle that those seeking to serve Jehovah, must worship him with spirit and truth. Job 4 24, 2 Co 4 18, 5 6, 7, God does not tolerate mixing of idolatrous practices with true worship. Jehovah condemned Israelites worshipping golden calf, even the Israelites had attached his name to calf. X 32 3-10, Jehovah God does not share his glory with graven images. Isaiah 42 8. What forms of idols are worshipped by mankind today? 
The Scriptures warns those who worship idols. Psalms 115 4-7 says, Their idols are silver and gold, the work of the hands of earthling man. A mouth they have, but they cannot speak, eyes they have, but they cannot see, ears they have, but they cannot hear. A nose they have, but they cannot smell. Hands are theirs, but they cannot feel. Feet are theirs, but they cannot walk, they utter no sound with their throat. Can idols match the glory of God? Regardless of how magnificent an idol may be, it can never match the glory of God. So an image of God could never be a truthful representation of Him. Romans 1 22, 23 God's law forbade making images as objects of worship. The second of the Ten Commandments decreed, You shall not make yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything in heaven or on earth beneath or in the waters under the earth, you shall not bow down to them or serve them. Exodus 24, 5, the inspired Christian scriptures also command, you must keep clear of idolatry. 1 Corinthians 10, 14. To whom could you compare the true God Jehovah? To whom could you liken God? What image could you contrive of him? Isaiah 40 18 Jesus explained, The hour will come in fact it is here already, when true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, that is the kind of worshipper the Father wants. So God is spirit, and those who worship must worship in spirit and truth. Whom did God appoint as the only one mediator between God and man? Jesus later said that true worshippers would worship the Father, no one else, John 4:23. Once an angel reprimanded the Apostle John for attempting to worship him, saying, Don't do that, it is God that you must worship. Revelation 22 9. Is it proper to pray to Jesus' earthly mother, Mary? or to a particular saint, asking them to intercede with God in one's behalf. The Bible's direct answer is, there is only one mediator between God and mankind, himself a man, Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy 2 5. No Mary, saints or dungy idols can intercede on behalf of man to redeem and forgive us from our inherited sin. Did Jesus perfectly reflect God's personality? Jesus by his own entire perfect life course on earth, he really made God's name known. He demonstrated that he spoke and performed miracles with God's full authority. Hence Jesus said, He that has seen me has seen the Father also. John 14 9 God's name thus took on greater meaning to his early followers. His followers too reflected God's personality in every aspect of their Christian's life. John 5 19, 30 What did Jesus say when opposers accused him of making himself equal to God? Jesus' opposers accused him of making himself equal to God. John 5 18, 10 30-33, however, Jesus never claimed to be on the same level as Almighty God. He said, The Father is greater than I am. John 14 28. Philippians 2 9. Jesus makes it clear that he is subordinate to God, stating, I cannot do a single thing of my own initiative. I seek, not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. John 5:30. To whom did Jesus personally pray? Jesus personally prayed, I publicly praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. Luke 10 21. On another occasion, Jesus raised his eyes heavenward and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. John 11 41, and as he was dying, Jesus prayed, Father, into your hands I entrust my spirit. Luke 23 46, in praying to his heavenly Father, 
the Lord of heaven and earth he set the fine example for his followers to pray to his father Jehovah. Now you know God has a name Jehovah. Would you like to know more about this true God Jehovah and his purpose for mankind's future? End is near for God's kingdom to rule mankind soon. You can get to know God personally by learning about him and taking steps to please him before the end come. God will then draw close to you. James 4 8, the Bible assures us that he is not far off from each one of us. Acts 17 27. Bible also says, without faith it is impossible to please God well. Hebrews 11 6. Genuine faith is based on knowledge. Romans 10:17. So study the Bible and prove to yourself that you can trust the true God Jehovah and he will save you from Satan and his false religious teachings. Jehovah's Witnesses would be happy to study the Bible with you, to get to know the true God Jehovah and how soon he will deliver his people from this wicked world. Click the link in the description to access the introduction to Bible study brochure and enjoy life forever. Thank you for watching our inspiring video. Our videos are made for educational purpose only. Subscribe to my channel to watch more of our videos on Bible truths. Like, share, subscribe feedback. God's invisible qualities are clearly seen from the world's creation onward, because they are perceived by the things made. Romans 1:20. Watch more inspiring videos in my channel.